Home whites for the Longhorns. Road black jerseys for Baylor and the tip controlled by Christy Wallace. When they met the first time, this game wasn't very competitive. Baylor dominated every facet of the game. Well, let's see who can be on the glass, and let's see if Kalani Brown can be contained. She's so good with that left hand and that 6-7 frame. Junior on a Slidell, Louisiana, the top shooter in the country from the floor at over 65%. Both these teams over 80 points. Texas very good in their transition game. Here's a look at Kim Mulkey now in her 18th season at Baylor with a couple of national championships. And the breaking news this week that uh, she is a finalist and has been nominated to enter the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame up in Springfield, Mass. As Ariel Atkins hits the pull up. Their guards, Debbie, did not shoot well at all in the loss earlier this year. See, that's a transition 15-footer, and you know that Baylor has spent a lot of time working on their transition defense to go against the Texas guards. Wallace leaves it off for Brown. No good off the window, and it will go to the Longhorns. Both sides, by the way, down a starter tonight due to injury. Natalie Chow for Baylor is still out. And Audrianne Karan Goudreau, they're going to miss her 6-4 frame inside for Texas. She brings incredible toughness. Both these teams are excellent rebounding teams. Baylor plus 19 on the glass. Texas plus 12. They both are very good offensive rebounding teams as well. LaShawn Higgs, the junior out of Round Rock, Texas, drops one down. You know, Beth, I think guards control everything. So Christy Wallace has a huge role to play in making sure that Baylor executes what they want to run on the offensive end. Tipped back out to Brown. Here is Wallace. Her career high was a 27-point performance in the blowout win over Texas last month. Right now, Texas is not bringing any help to the matchup with Kalani Brown. They're playing her straight up to start the game. Dakia Cohen, who has uh, moved into the starting lineup, gets that one to go. Joanna Holmes and Jatari White, you see there on your screen, that's their starting front line. They're gonna have to come up big today. Well, Joyner Holmes did play in the first matchup, but it wasn't the Joyner Holmes that we've come accustomed to know, the Big 12 freshman of the year last year. Straight up Kalani Brown, see that is going to be all day off the glass especially on the left side of the floor. So, Beth, you can't let her catch it on the left side of the floor. You're going to meet her at the nail, send her to the opposite side first. Brown with a couple of buckets, already four touches inside. Averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. And Atkins with the and one over Cox. And then Lauren's got to be careful. She was just warned by the official for giving her the brush off after the whistle. Watch the help off the ball screen. Lauren Cox is gapping so that Ariel Atkins can't turn the corner. But I'm not sure she saw the warning because she turned her back after she gave, uh, you know, the hand toss to Tyna Napier. You can hear some of the fans behind us sharing their sentiments with Kim Mulkey, who was up <laughs> talking with Tyna as well. Here they come in transition. Count the basket and a foul, and again, it's a touch, and it's close for Brown. See, she's running straight down the lane line, right to the block, which is where she wants to catch it. It's too late to defend her at that spot on the floor. You've got to meet her early and send her the opposite way. It's really challenging to do because she's 6'7", but you have to be able to figure out a way. If you just let her catch on the block, it's going to be a long night for Texas. The free throw. I like Joyner Holmes in the pinch going right back to that place and she scored on Lauren Cox so easily. Tipped back out to Higgs, drops it off underneath in the miss for Jatari White. go to work on home stripped as McCarty came to help and then Texas gives it right back. 
Sabres, Karen Aston, now in her sixth season. They were in the Sweet 16 last year when Karen was the Big 12 Coach of the Year. Her win total, second most in program history behind the legend Jody Conrad, winner of the 1986 National Championship here at Texas. Good pass by Lauren Cox out of the low block. There's the transition game, the layup. On the run, Jordan Hosey. Debbie Texas has to get some easy looks tonight, don't they, in situations just like that. Brown has it blocked, and then exchanging a word there with Kalani, who smiles back at her. The overall team speed would go to Texas. Yep. One through five. Okay, Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox don't run the floor as well as the post players of Texas. And Texas is already a very good transition team, so they do have an advantage there if they can speed the game up. Wide open layup on the inbound. Juicy Landrum, the sophomore from Waco. And an assist there from Christy Wallace. McCarty, last year's Big 12 Player of the Year. Joyner Holmes. Comes all the way out to Wallace, and they're going to get a reach-in foul called on Atkins. Well, so far, so good for Texas. And what Karen Aston talked to us about today at shoot-around, we've got to be more competitive than we were in the first game. We've got to win some of those 50-50 balls. We've got to hang with them on the glass. They were badly out-rebounded in that first matchup. Toughness isn't always about being bigger, stronger, faster. There's a lot of factors that go into that sort of competitiveness, and they've got to be able to be mentally tough and not make back-to-back -back mistakes against Baylor. Boy, and the Bears have another chance at a three-point play here on the drive from Wallace. Christy Wallace is just such an incredible competitor. She's dynamic with her skill set because She's a terrific three-point shooter, and as a guard, shoots over 50% from the floor. That's a couple of three-point plays early on. Old-fashioned and a five-point Baylor lead. Shook Sutton to McCarty going back door short. Wallace with the push and the nice feed on the run to D.D. Dee Dee Richards. Timeout Longhorns. And the Baylor Lady Bears trying to lock up an eighth consecutive Big 12 championship. And, of course, all eyes on a bigger prize. The NCAA's reveal tonight, the final one before the end of the regular season and into the tournament. And right now, Baylor and Texas are both two seeds, Debbie. Well, Baylor could be undefeated. And I'm sure the committee is going to factor in that their sole loss on the road at UCLA was without Kim Mulkey and without Lauren Cox. Yeah. I think we're in agreement. Louisville and Notre Dame may be playing each other again in the ACC championship, and that may give Baylor a path to move up to a one. Watch the transition push by Christy Wallace. Shoulders over her pads like a running back, and they're out on the run. That is a terrific job by Christy Wallace. It's one of those things that makes her so dynamic at the point. It's not just her scoring and her skill set. It's her understanding of when to push, tempo, how to make things work for Baylor. A 12-2 run over the last couple of minutes. They already have a pair of old-fashioned three-point plays, and they have numbers again on the run and a bad pass from the freshman Richards behind the head of Wallace. I mean, Richards need one more dribble and make a left-handed layup. You had two on one. You had numbers. Both teams starting out tonight better than 60% shooting. Holmes, what kind of an impact can she have now? She's played almost half of a season. She missed the first semester. Reminder that this week's edition of Super Tuesday is the Big Ten and the SEC. We've got Illinois and Michigan State. 
The Spartans with that huge comeback on Saturday and then Kentucky ended their four game skid over the weekend. They will be taking on Arkansas Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile at seven and nine Eastern on ESPN. Kentucky had lost four in a row, finally bounced back with a win against Alabama, but going on the road to Arkansas, they are tough at home. Jatari White goes to the left hand and scores. We are in the middle of our triple header tonight. Duke beating Florida State earlier and stick around after this one out west with Oregon and UCLA coming your way in Eugene. And Morris comes in at the point and moves Christy Wallace off the ball. Cohen short, Holmes swooping in for the rebound. Probably not the best shot selection, and we know how important that is in talking to Christy Wallace today. First thing she said offensively is shot selection will be critical for us on the road. Atkins off the mark. That's her first miss after she hit her first two shots. That's a much better take by Cohen. Bobbit on the shot by Holmes. Here comes Atkins with the push. Intercepted by Cox. She tried to get McCarty in the length of Lauren Cox right there making the play. Six Texas turnovers already in this first quarter. Brown off the bounce. Fouled on the shot by White. Most of the time in the high-low action of Baylor, Brown doesn't have to make a post move. How about that, putting it on the floor, a little spin. If she just gets a little half hook with her right hand, that's unstoppable. Her numbers, second in the league in scoring, the best field goal percentage, second in rebounds. And she has Jatari White in foul trouble. She has picked up two early, and she will come out. See, and this is where Audrianne Caron Goudreau, who has out with the injury, is missing because this is this is tough for Texas. Yeah. You've got to use all your fouls to go against Kalani Brown, and they'll have to go to the freshman Rella Booth, the six-three newcomer who's only played in 13 games this year. They were had such high expectations for this freshman class. And they have yet to deliver statistically on the floor. McCarty, the senior, gets the bounce. That's the first three ball of the night for either side. And neither team shoots the three very well. And, and that might be the difference in the game, Beth, is who can make the most timely threes, especially as we get into the second half. But tough twos is going to be the mantra for both teams. That'll be the first foul on Joyner Holmes. And that'll put Lauren Cox on the line. Fifth team foul, you start shooting the two free throws. Yeah, I know how Kim Mulkey likes to work inside out. And when you've got the skill set of a pick and pop like Lauren Cox, even though she doesn't shoot the three, more of a short roll out of their pick and pop game. And then Kalani Brown, I and mean, that's tough on Texas's front line. Comes with the runner won't go. Final two minutes of this first quarter. Brown. Five on the shot clock. Cox from outside, and that one won't go. And then a good scramble by Dee Dee Richards to force it out of bounds off of Texas. A really good crash from the top. It goes off Texas on the baseline. Watch the crash by Dee Dee Richards right here. Those are the kind of plays that Texas needs to come up with. Well, they have a chance right now. Baylor has missed their last four shots since that last media timeout. Oh, they missed Wallace wide open underneath. Cox, that pass over the head and the turnover.
Well, you can tell this is a great rivalry, isn't it? Listening to the fans behind us. <laughs> they are itching for a win yes. against Baylor. It's been seven years since they've seen one here at home. The seven-year itch, is that yeah. what you were trying to say there, Beth? How about that? And when you look back over the last eight years, 15-1, and one, that's the dominance that Baylor has had over the Horns as they have taken over the Big 12. Booth rebounds to Wallace Miss. McCarty off the hesitation, and Wallace doesn't bite. Really good D. So Brook will step outside and knock down her second triple. Joyner Holmes just runs in between her and Wallace, and it gives Brook McCarty enough separation. The catch inside, Kalani Brown, 11 points here in the first quarter. Can't get her off that block. A monster to deal with. Horns will hold for one. They'll set the ball screen for McCarty. Looking for three to beat the buzzer, and that won't go. And the Baylor Lady Bears have the four-point lead. Brooke McCarty, the senior, the most durable player for this team, wants a win at home, knocks down the triple, and then Kalani Brown just going to work all. What an incredible run by Bill Self in Kansas and Kim Mulkey to be in the same sentence with what she's done on the women's side in dominating this league. I think Mulkey's going to join him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Both Kim Mulkey and yeah. Tina Thompson, the assistant coach for Texas, are in, under consideration. One of 13 finalists, and yes, I do. I think they're, I think they both have a great shot at it. Cox double teamed Atkins coming down to dig, and it's going to go over to Texas. That was a very slow developing play off the timeout. You know, Lauren Cox wasn't even considering looking to score out of the short corner. Now she's going to take a seat. That's four turnovers already for Lauren as she exits. Texas is already down a post player, Jachari White. Couple of fouls in that first quarter. So they are relying on Rella. Here's Booth coming to set the screen, the freshman post player. Gonna have to spend some more time on the floor tonight. Looking for another three. They've started to shoot the three a lot more. In the last several minutes, pull up for Wallace, knocks it down. I'm telling you, this is a very good decision-making point guard at a high rate of speed. She understands what I call the three W's. Who to get the ball to, when, and where. Took that one herself and knocked it down. Rashawn Higgs with the kick out to a wide open. McCarty couldn't hit it. The long rebound ends. Up in a breakaway, and Wallace. Yeah, Earlier in the, her shot. Yeah, in the first quarter, Beth, we showed you the push by Christy Wallace and, and how she would distribute. Right here, she pushes, sets her feet under her shoulders. After going at a fast rate, she stops and pops. It's the definition of it. Another offensive rebound. Cohen short. Brook, nice change of pace and change of direction for two. Last year's Big 12 Player of the Year. A competitor who wants to win here never beat Baylor at home. Playing in her 131st game tonight is McCarty. On the run out, Higgs. Vision by Joyner Holmes up the floor to the rim. A leak out by Higgs. Cohen and one. Chance for another three point play for Baylor. Watch Takia Cohen. Little ball fake. 
I think that's a good call. Another chance for a three-point play by Baylor. And that is also the second foul on Atkins. So now two Texas starters are sitting. Cohen short. Another opportunity. Wallace for three. That won't go. And yet again, they hit the boards. According to her hoop stats, the second best offensive rebounding percentage in the country at 44%. Another one. This is a fourth opportunity. Wallace off the bounce. And a held ball, and it will stay down here. There's an example of competitiveness that Karen Aston was talking to us today at shoot around. Compete. They're getting beat on the glass. 7-2 on the offensive glass right now. Four offensive rebounds just on this possession alone. is over at the scorer's table. They reset the shot clock. And I think they're good here. 7.07 to play in the first half. The interior passing has been a bit of a struggle tonight. Cox and Brown. Well, Wednesday night, we've got an ACC Sonic blockbuster doubleheader for you. First at 7 at Syracuse, taking on North Carolina. And then at 9 Eastern, Louisville Duke. A great night of Sonic blockbusters Wednesday at 7 and 9 on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Grayson Allen, the ACC Player of the Week. He's for Duke. He played play better with... Yes. Badly. Mm -hmm. Well, the space changes on yeah. the floor. Yeah. You know, you don't have two bigs in there all the time. Good one in the ACC. A couple of them tomorrow. And now Lauren Cox has just picked up her second personal foul. So it looks like she's going to have to sit as Holmes heads to the line. been a rough start for Lauren. A point, a couple fouls, and the four turnovers. Yeah. The high-low connection between she and Kalani Brown hasn't worked. Uh, they both have turned it over in that scenario, and usually they are very efficient. Does this provide an opportunity for Joyner Holmes to have that breakout night on the national scene? Last year's Big 12 Freshman of the Year, but out the first semester. And a pull up for Wallace. So good. Takes her defender below the level of the screen. McCarty taking it all the way. If you don't see two shoulders, two hips, the smallest player on the floor can get to the rim. Their offense tonight has been in transition. And behind the arc for McCarty and the spin there by Richards. Holmes in the trail position. Thought about it too much. Not in the flow. Working down low, Kalani Brown. 13 now in the first half. And every one of her baskets is on the left side of the floor. Five for eight tonight. Looking for Holmes off the pick and roll. Assist McCarty. Landrum on the drive. Got by Holmes for the land. Here comes the quick counter from McCarty. Here comes the double and the strip. A good hustle play by Dee Dee Richards. 
And now Richards headed the other way with Wallace. Goes to the right side. Tough fade away. Yeah, see, that's where you got to make a good decision with the basketball. We've got a timeout and a seven point game tonight in Austin on this play for K night. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Geico. Since January 15th, that's the order, by the way, right? You think yes. that's top to bottom, one through four? I do. And I think there's the geography and the economics that come into play in our tournament. So it's not a clear S curve. There's a lot of factors that go into how the seeding takes place. Nice dish and the find Arella Booth, assisted by Higgs. Yeah, we've got a G curve and an E curve that we have to deal with on the women's side, right? Yeah, geography is proximity to the regional side, and the E is the economic impact of team travel. They factor into decision making by the committee. The men have the quadrants. They've got the advanced analytics. Women don't pods. have that. Yep. We don't have any of that. We should. We we will one day. But if we took the Sweet 16 to Vegas, we don't have to worry about any of that. There you go. Thirty-seven to thirty. Baylor on top. Long miss by Booth, and here comes Christy Wallace. Knocked out of bounds. You know, as a coach, you go with players that you trust. And there's no question in my mind that Kim Mulkey trusts Christy Wallace with a ball in her hands. She's such a high-level thinker. She's skilled. She's in incredible shape. She makes good decisions with the basketball in their up-tempo style, and she really defends her position well. Seven points, three assists, a turnover, has four rebounds. Wallace doing a little bit of everything. Got a whistle on the floor, and the foul will be called outside. I'll support the KAL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. You can donate at kyow.com. Funds raised will go to Women's Cancer Research. In the name of uh, the late great head coach at NC State, KAL, also an Olympic coach for. Team USA and, and your coach at NC State, Debbie. If you can make a difference, it doesn't matter how much you donate. Please help the KL Cancer Fund. Um, your money's going to go to work in grants and you're going to help someone, whether it's finding a cure or providing quality clinical trials to allow you to extend your life. Big part of this play for K weekend. McCarty had the launch, and there's a foul on the rebound. As Texas is going deeper into its bench, Jordan Hosey whistled for the foul there. We're also seeing Jada Underwood. As Hosey now becomes the third Longhorn with two fouls in the first half. I think Texas has done a decent job defending when they've been able to get into the quarter court. Now, when Baylor's playing the transition, that's hard for anybody to defend. See right there, good collapse on the low block. Dakia Cohen's got to make that play. Holmes on the drive, and she's fouled. And that'll be on Kalani Brown, and that'll be her first. You know, I'm kind of surprised that Kalani Brown would even consider trying to take a charge. You know. I mean, she only averages 2.5 personal fouls a game, so she's pretty smart about not committing fouls, knowing when to block shots, to stay out of foul trouble. There's the bio blast on Joyner Holmes. Violation of school rules forced her to miss the first half of the season. She was a rising star a year ago, and. High hopes for her future here at Texas. Just a sophomore out of Cedar Hill. Long and athletic, playing herself into shape. I think the game rust is off. You know, with the Karan Goudreau injury, she's been forced into the starting lineup. But I'm fine with her playing about 32 minutes a game. She can get conditioned to do that because she's incredibly gifted. 
that pass to McCarty, trying to get it back to Holmes, and a foul's going to be called on Christy Wallace. And that is the second now on Wallace. So both starting fives having some problems with the fouls. And where is the leadership on the perimeter now for Baylor as Wallace checks out? So remember I talked about trust and with less than two minutes left to play in the half, Kim Mulkey feels like they can survive right here without Christy Wallace on the floor. On the drive, the block by Richards. Alexis Morris is going to have to be really smart right here with the basketball and make good choices. I would get the ball back to Kalani Brown on the left block. She hasn't caught it there in a few possessions. Richards swooping towards the rim. Brown, put back, no. Another opportunity and she's fouled. 11 offensive rebounds in the first half for Baylor. I mentioned before Baylor's offensive rebounding percentage, about 43% of their misses. That is outstanding. Speaks to their shot selection and their ability to crash with the length that they have on the perimeter as well as their size inside. Kalani is 76% free throw shooter. Honorable mention All-American last year. Looking a lot like a first-teamer this year. She's already got 15 here in the first half. She's the player of the year in the Big 12. I don't think there's any question. And right now, Baylor's plus 10 on the glass. Remember when they lost, or when, when Texas lost, they were minus 16. The runner is good from McCarty. Sorry, Beth. She just continues to make plays. She's not getting any easy opportunity to score. Five for eight now and a dozen points for Brooke. As we approach the one minute mark here in the first half. See the overload. Trying to get that lob pass into Brown. Juicy Landrum for three. Rella Booth boards and a foul. Don't like the shot selection at all. Brooke McCarty playing off the screening action. So she goes, defense goes over the top. There's no help on the screener's defender. She gets a look at the rim. Second foul on Dee Dee Richards and Rella Booth to the line. Just four for 10 on the season. It's that first one. Marilla Booth only has combined eight points in the last two games, but I thought she played really well in the last game against Oklahoma State. Moves well, rebounds, very good screener. Big hand from the fans here. Marilla Booth, a lot of minutes with Jatari White in the early foul trouble. Interesting putting Joyner Holmes back on the floor and a defensive possession. And when you don't have Christy Wallace on the floor, you really don't have a, a chance for a two for one. Morris gets the roll. Actually, I take that back. A good decision by Morris. Six second different shot and game clocks. Bums. Time to go to work. Posey, baseline. Around and out. And there's time for Baylor. They like the handoff here. Morris hangs and hits. Alexis Morris, the freshman from Beaumont, with the last couple of buckets in the final minute. And it's an eight-point Baylor lead. Night for her. Brooke McCarty's made play after play for Texas. She's been terrific, making threes, floaters. She leads Texas with 12 first half points. Ariel Atkins, who was limited to just eight minutes in the first half with some foul problems, knocks it down. She's now got seven points. 
One of the stories in the first half was foul trouble on both sides, but also 11 offensive rebounds for Baylor. They were plus 10 on the glass. These are the top two rebounding teams in the country. And an offensive foul going to be called on Brown, and that will be her second. You know she loves the right shoulder. Katari White gets on the right shoulder. Hmm, I don't know about that. Kim Mulkey didn't agree with that one either. She shared that with the officials on the way back up the floor. Atkins, the senior, trying to get a home win over Baylor. These seniors haven't gotten one yet. In fact, it's been seven years since they last beat the Lady Bears here. And they certainly don't want to watch Baylor celebrate a Big 12 championship. The Lady Bears can do just that for the eighth year in a row if they win tonight. And that is big right there. It's the third foul on Kalani Brown. Remember the first half, Kalani Brown tried to draw a charge. It was a poor decision. That was her first foul. And then two quick ones here in the second. Joiner home showing us a little bit of her skill set off the glass and pushing into their transition game. She is trying to respond to the challenge and the floor will open up a bit underneath as Brown will leave. Game's going to change right here, Beth. Joiner Holmes is going to be confident. And as Karen Aston said to her team, they have to clean up their detail. Got to do a better job boxing out. They've got to stop turning the ball over. So Baylor is without their probable All-American and the probable Big 12 player of the year. Sits with three. White with the rebound. They'll look to run. Baseline drive by Higgs in traffic. Drops it off. Joiner Holmes for two. Here's the Baylor leader right here, Christy Wallace. That was too easy. And you go to a little bit more ball screening action offensively without Kalani Brown on the floor. And I'm sure Kim Mulkey practices without Kalani on the floor a lot for that foul trouble reason, as now you see back-to-back -back baskets on the low block for Texas. Jatari White attacking inside. Offensive foul on the handoff as they slammed into McCarty. Dribble handoff right here, really tough to adjudicate, but there's no question that was a foul. That's the third now on Richards. And the turnover. Good defense by Christy Wallace. This is the pull up for Morris, and it won't go. Higgs tried to lob it inside to join her homes, and it's gotten sloppy. Yeah, back to back, very poor decision making. Okay, these are the two best teams in the Big 12, and then there's a significant drop off. It may only get three teams into the tournament. Charlie Cream's latest bracketology has three in and three others on the bubble. Holmes, put back, won't go. Joyner's got another chance, blocked and a foul. Well, Mulkey's gonna say that she got away with going over the back. But what a terrific effort by Joyner Holmes. Foul called on to Kia Cohen, that's her second. Nine points, eight rebounds for Joyner. Her 17th game back. And probably her best outing so far. A double-double in their win over Iowa State. They've won seven in a row since they lost to Baylor in mid-January. Double figures, six of the last seven for Joyner. Last seven games, she's averaged 10 and eight since in that part of that winning streak since the last time they played Baylor. And she's got 10 and eight right now. It's a two point game and Wallace walked.
chance for the Longhorns to tie it up or take the lead. No place to go right here for Christy Wallace. That's probably the first poor decision she's made tonight. Atkins. And the hold will be called before the shot. Well, this week's edition of Super Tuesday, we've got Illinois Michigan State for you at 7 o'clock, followed by Kentucky Arkansas. Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile. And a doubleheader for you on ESPN. We are in the midst of our uh, big Monday triple header. Duke, 30 points from Lexi Brown earlier tonight. They beat Florida State. And coming up next, Sabrina Ionescu, Ruthie Hebert for the Oregon Ducks, taking on Jordan Canada and UCLA. That'll be for first place in the Pac-12. I think the winner of that game between UCLA and Oregon gets the two seed in Spokane. Texas has tied it up. Lauren Cox looking for three, and she's got it. Boy, she could use a big turnaround after a, a very poor showing in the first half. Four turnovers and foul trouble. Holmes on the drive, and the dish to White. Good interior passing. Joyner Holmes playing like uh, the freshman of the year in the league a season ago. And a foul going to be called on the block, and that will be the third on White. Watch Joyner Holmes here. We've seen her score from the pinch. Lauren Cox had a chance to draw a charge yes, right did. there, and she turned away from it. You get Joyner Holmes motoring at you and off balance. You got to step in and take one for the team. So White will depart and Rella Booth will come back. Wallace. Boy, they have been so good on their inbound plays tonight. Christy Wallace is like a silencer. And whenever they need a big play, she can deliver. 11 now for Wallace. Loves playing the Longhorns. Her career high was 27 in their first meeting this year. Atkins now heating up. So Wallace goes underneath that ball screen. Two strong dribbles to the elbow. That's all you need. Double digits for Ariel. Rested after, like you said, Beth. Eight minutes in the first half with foul trouble. She's got the steal and the breakaway. And the Longhorns go on top. Wallace on the drive, gets it to go. Gamer, winner. Hanging in there with Kalani Brown on the bench. You gotta run something for Atkins here. She's been too good, she rejects the screen right here. Holmes wants it in the paint, she's got it. And that'll go to Baylor. Ariel Atkins in the second half playing a little D up. I think it's really important for us to remember what she was all about. She was a terrific role model at a time when we all needed one. And we welcome you back here to Austin, the play for ga uh, K game tonight. And uh, you know what Coach Yao is all about, Debbie, having played for NC State. Well, let me say this first of all. Karen Aston is a terrific board member. She has been a big part of many initiatives that we've put together. And, you know, and, and Kim Mulkey's been a great supporter as well. And the Play for K games are so symbolic of what Coach Al would want in terms of what Karen said, bringing people together and playing at a higher level. And I always think the Play for K games are outstanding, but if you can help contribute, please do so. Go to the KL.com website. Joyner Holmes with the offensive foul, gets them another look. McCurdy. 
Another pick and roll. Holmes drops it off inside. Booth with the layup. Joyner Holmes has tremendous vision. And she's just facilitating. She's doing whatever she wants in the middle of the floor right now without Kalani Brown to defend. Three assists. Karen Aston says she's got a point guard's brain in that 6-3 frame. Wallace doing it all right now for Baylor with Brown in foul trouble. Christie's got 17. 27 the first time these two teams met. Off the mark. Long rebound. Baylor's got it, and they've got numbers, and Morris will hold it up for Coach like Teller to stay out. Yeah, yeah. I like it. How can you miss Kim Oki over there going, stop, hold the ball? She's got the pink leather working tonight. Wallace fouled on the drive. Well, as you referenced, Debbie, you can support the K-Out Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research by donating at kout.com. All the funds raised will go to women's cancer research. I was so lucky, Beth, that I got to have a 30-year relationship with my coach. I, I wish everyone had that experience. And, and she was tremendous, and she cared about the game and cared about us as people more than just players. And if you can help our fund, please do so. It doesn't matter what you give. It's important that you help. And it's all women's cancers. $5.63 million working in grants. That last foul, by the way, was on Atkins, her third. Foul will be called on the McCurdy Drive. McCarty at, at the line, of course, uh, you don't have to look very far to find someone in your own life or in your own family that uh, has battled cancer. And Shamika Scott, one of the members of their 2005 national championship team at Baylor, passed away last month in her fight with cancer. Remembered so fondly, uh, they've got her letters or her initials on their jersey the rest of the season. 33 years old is too young. Four point Baylor lead. Under two and a half to go in this third quarter. The Lady Bears playing most of this quarter without Kalani Brown. Atkins off the mark. Rebound to Cohen. Working inside, Lauren Cox gets the lay in. I mean, Lauren Cox just runs where she wants to go, and there's no attempt to meet her at the nail and send her opposite. Really good deal. Another takeaway, Morris with the push. Got hung up in the air, not sure where she wanted to go with it, and there's Cohen to clean it up. Let me tell you this, Beth. Baylor uses the board as well as any team I've seen in the women's game. How many bank shots have we seen them attempt already? No Kalani Brown, no problem for Baylor after Texas momentarily grabbed the lead. The Lady Bears pick up the slack. And uh, Tina may not be done yet. Both she and Kim Mulkey will find out at the men's Final Four if they will be going into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame up in Springfield, Mass. Well, congratulations to both of them, and uh, hopefully more congratulations to come. Very exciting. Shot clock down to two, White. That's going to be a shot clock violation. So Baylor, without Kalani Brown, has actually now outscored Texas by a couple of points in this quarter after the Longhorns briefly took a one-point lead. Baylor has hit eight of its last nine shots. Final minute, third quarter, Lauren Cox 
Hustling her way inside, make it nine for ten. Considered spinning, but had the one-on-one -on -one and gets over that left shoulder, beautiful. White splits the double around and out. And then Jatari White sprints to the front of the rim and gets excellent position, just can't finish. Lady Bears opening up the double-digit lead now in the third. Yeah, Christy Wallace right here. Want to play for her. Atkins is going to back up a little bit. They like to do a dribble handoff here. Wallace behind the back into the lane for the lay-in off glass. Are you kidding me? Christy Wallace with 21 and then the three ball to beat the buzzer. And it's good. Play behind the back and a little scoop. And then Brooke McCarty. Bang. Oh, yeah. Sending us to break the right way. By a point. They win tonight. They get their eighth straight Big 12 championship. Back door. Christy Wallace from Juicy Landrum. What a great call. Knowing that Texas would be up the line, overplaying aggressively on the defensive end. Terrific call from the bench off the timeout. Baylor has now hit 11 of its last 12 shots after Texas had momentarily grabbed a one-point lead. Huge second half for Christy Wallace with 16 of her 23 points. She's played like an All-American tonight. Senior who has been to three straight Elite Eights desperately trying to get the Bears back to the Final Four this year. And a chance at their third national championship. We told you about that game coming up next. Kara Lawson with a preview for us. I have two reasons why you need to watch tonight's game, Oregon versus UCLA, and it involves guard play. Jordan Canada, the senior for UCLA, one of the best all-around players in the country, against Sabrina Ionescu for Oregon, who's also one of the best all-around players in the country. It should be an up-and-down affair. Yeah, Sabrina Ionescu has already broken the NCAA triple-double yeah. record that Susie mcconnell Serio held forever since the early 80s. And the other star is inside, Ruthie Hebert, who has hit her last 30 shots. Time the NCAA record, 30 in a row for Ruthie. That's impressive. That's very impressive for a post player to hit 30 consecutive shots. So the streak will uh, continue into the game tonight. And Ruthie Hebert is not just a, a post player that scores on putbacks and drop-offs. Yeah. She's got some post moves. She can score in a high post, and Yonescu can get her the ball. Oregon enters the night a game up on UCLA and Stanford, so that's pivotal. And Texas has got to shoot the ball better. They don't have to panic yet. They've got plenty of time, but they've got to get some stops as well. Cox in the trail position. Long rebound to Atkins. It's a quick three in transition, but Texas can't run off it. Joyner Holmes. Missed the layup. Okay. He wants Baylor to slow it down. Yeah, and Texas has to be really careful here. They're trying to play fast, but you can't be in a hurry. So if you don't have the transition opportunity, you'll have plenty of time to run your sets. And Christy Wallace just throws the ball out of bounds. Well, tonight after Big Monday on ESPN, don't miss Sports Center with Bucci and Kenny Maine. The latest from bracketologist Joe Lenardi. Also, the Yankees are practicing again, Debbie. And the confidential poll on LeBron James at Sports Center after Kansas, Oklahoma on ESPN and on your ESPN app. I'm not ready for baseball yet. We got oh, a lot of, of basketball to play. Spring training underway as uh, we wind down the last couple of weeks of the regular season in college hoops. I can't believe that we're going to be starting postseason play. Next week, conference tournaments begin. 
this score holds. Debbie, is there any reason why we can't consider Baylor a, a number one seed? No, knowing that Louisville and Notre Dame may have to play again. I highly anticipate Notre Dame and Louisville meeting in the ACC yeah. championship. Uh, I, I don't see how Baylor stays off the one line. And, and, you know, whoever ends up being the two in Albany where UConn is, you know, we have repeatedly called that anything short of automatic loss. Yeah, there's lots of terms we've used for it. We're just not going to call them on, that on the air. But, you know, you Baylor's an interesting situation. You're going to put them as a two, and this is why you want to avoid Albany, UConn. Look at that. Since so their the first national championship in 1995, they are 106 and 12 in the first two weekends. They've been to 10 straight Final Fours, Debbie. That means they have won 40 in a row in the first and second round, the Sweet 16, and the Elite Eight. That's what you would be up against if you headed to Albany. I mean, they're going to play at home first and second round. They're yeah. going to drive to Albany. I'm sure that UConn fans have already purchased the tickets yeah. in Albany. There's probably no tickets to get there. And that would be the only place where there's no tickets to get right now. McCarty with the triple. It's a back to within 12. The other three regionals will be predicated on the G and the E curve, and that will factor into who buys tickets and fans supporting those events. Let's hope they do. And one opportunity for Lauren Cox. The efficiency of the Baylor offense has been fantastic. They can get whatever they want on the offensive end. The combination of Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox really solid and here's where that g and e curve comes into play right what, what do you do with mississippi state louisville and and baylor and notre dame all would be close to kansas city or lexington mccarty with the score so somebody's got to go out west to spokane as a one seed and play a two seed who's going to be from the pac 12. yep probably oregon at this juncture if oregon wins tonight That's what came out with the reveal for Kansas City and Spokane with Notre Dame out in Spokane. Although you think you tend to think Mississippi State's going to head out there, doesn't I, I have a feeling Mississippi State's going to get sent out there. But if the way Spokane stands right now, you better watch out for Missouri. As a three seed, a sneaky Missouri. It's the backcourt of wow. Texas. And that move right there, put that on the All-American reel. And, and what makes this even extra special tonight is the fact that they are they have extended the lead with Kalani Brown in foul trouble and she hasn't even taken a shot in the second half after that huge first half for Brown. But Wallace has been so good, not just scoring Debbie, distributing, she's got yep. six assists as well. It's, it's a dynamic, high-level skill set. She understands, as I said before, the three W's, who to get the ball to, when and where, of a really good point guard. And should we be surprised? I mean, Kim Mulkey has... In terms of trap by Texas in the full court pressure. I like the change by Karen Aston. Use your depth right here. Try to generate some turnovers. Be careful about opening up the floor, though. But you don't have to worry about backside three-point shooting. No. Here's the other thing, too, for the committee to consider. You know, UConn also came into this building earlier this year and got out of here with a four-point win. And now Baylor coming in here, and right now they're up double digits on Texas. Do you think they consider margin of victory? The committee. I think they will look head-to-head -at, -head at teams. I'm not saying they're going to be ahead of Connecticut. Let's not get crazy on that if the Huskies continue on beaten which it looks like they will but I if I was on the committee I certainly would say wow that's pretty impressive three on two what you run since October and Texas turns it over details what Karen Aston told her team points off of turnovers for Baylor. They've got the advantage there. They've got the advantage with second chance points.
and they are plus 12 on the boards. Two-man game, Wallace and Cox. Air ball from Cohen, and it's Texas gonna get it back. Texas has plenty of time here. They can score, get into their full court pressure. I thought their last couple of traps were effective, even though Baylor didn't turn it over. It affected them not being able to finish on the other end in a shot clock violation. Atkins fouled on the drive. Now oh, get Ariel to the line, the third on Cohen. Yeah, stop the clock, Beth, yeah. get to the free throw line. score here so you can get your pressure. He misses, misses them both. Texas really trying to turn up the heat. And a timeout call by Baylor. We'll take a 30 second break and be right back to the Orleans Center. The Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy. Both those games Saturday on ESPN. Baylor needs to keep the ball off the sideline, out of the corners, in the middle of the floor. As we talk about the Baylor women, like we talk about the Kansas men, Bill Self, 13 straight Big 12 regular season titles, and for Kim Mulkey, looking for an eighth in a row here tonight over the last eight years they are 132 and seven against the rest of the big 12 conference and they have the number one recruiting class coming in next year no slippage, no slippage in Waco. Waco, no? big question right now for lady bear fans is is this the club that gets them back to the final four it's been a five-year drought atkins hangs and hits and it's now a 10-point game, four minutes to go. Cox to Wallace. Texas really trying to speed things up, and then Wallace is tied up, and it's Texas ball. Got to move it, Christy Wallace. Can't hold it in the middle of the floor. 24 for Brooke McCarty, 23 for Christy Wallace. Outstanding guard battle going on in the second game of our doubleheader. Got another good one coming up out west. Oregon UCLA is next. Jatari White knocks it down. Eight point game. Now you're feeling a little pressure if you're Baylor. Wallace trying to dribble out of trouble. they can get Kalani Brown back into this one. She's fouled on the catch. Well, if you can ball fake to the low block from the high post right there, Texas is going to bite. They're looking to help on Kalani Brown. And you might need to ball fake and be strong with the ball right now because Texas is definitely coming after it. Fresh 30 here, or they missed Wallace again, wide open underneath. Brown, what a play by Wallace, who was all set to dribble it back out top and saw Brown wide open underneath. Good cut to the bucket. Seventh assist for Wallace. Gets it back up to a 10-point game. Under three to go. The floater from McCarty, no. Backdoor cut. Cohen all alone. That's the danger of the full court pressure and the trapping and opening up the floor. Not for threes for Baylor, but they build it back up to double digits. 
Dakia Cohen with 18 now, too shy of her career high. Booth scores down low for Texas. Another good pass by Joyner Holmes. Subs coming on for Texas. They're trying to rotate in some fresh legs. Let's see if Morris will set a screen on this one instead of just trying to cut to get open. Texas switches on that screening action. Got to be able to get the ball in bounds. You don't want to burn a timeout here. Baylor does have three timeouts remaining. Over the top to Lauren Cox. And a reach in foul. Called on Shug Sutton. Well, you've got to get that basketball there if you're Texas when Lauren Cox puts it on the floor in the middle of the court. Watch for Christy Wallace on this out of bounds play. There she is with the catch and the release. Offensive rebound, Cohen ties her career high. She's got 20, and a Longhorn is down injured. Both teams heading over to their benches. The athletic trainers are out, uh, and it would appear that is Joyner Holmes, the injured Texas player. It is absolutely silent in this building. She's 24 in white right there. Non-contact just when she came down. Two minutes to go. And Christy Wallace has really fought hard over the top of those ball screens. Good play to the bucket by Brooke McCarty. 26 for McCarty, her season high. Wallace has it across midcourt. This is who you want to have the basketball in their hands. A good free throw shooter, Christy Wallace. Plus, she's your gamer. What a job she did in that third quarter when uh, Brown was out with foul trouble. They actually extended the lead and at one point had hit 11 of 12 shots. And Wallace has been the floor general tonight. You want to move the basketball here. Shot clock is winding down. The high ball screen has been very effective for Baylor. Wallace dribbling out of trouble. Floats one up, won't go. And it's kept alive by Baylor. Rebounding again, a significant factor tonight. And the Lady Bears, for the 27th time in 27 games, will out-rebound their opponent this year. Tops in the country. Their shot selection was very good. Their transition defense, excellent. Two important keys that we heard from Kalani Brown and Christy Wallace this afternoon. Outstanding balance, Debbie. Wallace and Cohen with over 20. Brown with a double-double, 17 and 12. And is this enough to prove to the selection committee that they are deserving of a number one seed? Final minute. And can Baylor put the finishing touches on an eighth straight? Big 12 championship, Texas committing the foul, 53 seconds to go. Give me the ball, please. Give me the ball. Thank you. Hey, give us 
Free throws coming up for Baylor. Cohen is one for three tonight. Texas did a good job of denying Christy Wallace. You don't want her to catch it in the late game situation here because you, you don't want to have to put her on the line. Cohen with a new career high tonight. She's got 22 points. Senior out of Charleston, South Carolina. McCarty blocked by Brown. Texas just stopped moving the basketball. And instead of playing off the pass tonight, they spent a lot of time off the bounce trying to just go one-on-one, -on -one, and it just w wasn't enough. Atkins. And the frustration continuing for Texas. When you're Karen Astor, you're going to look at the, the film and you're going to say, we've scored 78 points, but we gave up 88. Offensive rebounds, a huge factor in the first half for Baylor, not as much in the second. But when you get Kalani Brown in foul trouble with three fouls and she doesn't play in the third quarter and you can't make a move, that's tough. And it was a total team effort by Baylor. Lauren Cox much better in the second half. Christy Wallace fantastic in the third quarter. And Dakia Cohen on the glass and scoring the basketball for Baylor. Three ball goes and a quick timeout for Texas. Nine point game. Let's check in right now with the studio and Zubin. I think they have all the pieces to make a deep run in postseason. They defend at a high level, they rebound, they've got a go-to on the block. Christy Wallace is an incredible playmaker at top. They've got enough pieces around those two in the middle of what you would call the battery, if you will, for baseball. Strong up the middle with Kalani Brown and Christy Wallace. Lauren Cox will head to the line here with just 19 seconds to go. In Texas, you know, they can hang on to the two seed. They don't lose that spot in the Big 12 tournament by this loss here. And they'll get a chance, or they should have another chance to play. Baylor in the Big 12 tournament. The win streak will now be at 23 in a row for Baylor. McCarty puts up the three and hits it. 29 for Brooke. She's been fantastic. He has been a combination of threes and floaters. And Kim Mulkey is saying she got time out to advance the basketball. Now are the officials going to give her time out to be able to advance the ball? Or did Baylor make an effort to inbound it? Now they all came together and yeah. agreed that she did get the time out before there was an advancement of the basket. There's a foul called and some pleasantries exchanged. Hosey and Cohen. Dakia trying to add to her career high. She's got 23 right now. Let's check in now with Zubin. Six seconds away from heading out to Eugene. McCarty gets the shot up and hits it. A new career high for Brooke. But Baylor with the inbound. And the Lady Bears.
Bears for the eighth year in a row are Big 12 champions. Ninety-three, eighty-seven. Baylor a winner over Texas. Coming up next, it's UCLA and Oregon. Now let's get you out to Adam, Rebecca, and Karen Eugene.